Hello and welcome to Wild Seat. We find ourselves in the darkest part of the sea, with a squadron of brave men giving their all in a high-risk mission to rescue some comrades in distress trapped in a dying submarine. Jonas, the big boss, manages to save several of them, but suddenly, like a bad dream, something starts hitting the submarine from the outside. Can you imagine Jonas's face when the walls of the submarine start to tear apart? Our man manages to get the survivors to the rescue ship, but it's not all plain sailing. Two of his boys are trapped in the submarine, and there it is, the beast of the abyss, hammering relentlessly. Jonas is forced to make one of those sleepless decisions, leave his boys behind to save the rest. They set sail at full speed as the sub begins to implode. The explosion chases them, but they manage to dodge it by the skin of their teeth. Five years later, we move to the city of Shanghai, where a man named Morris steps out of a helicopter at the Mana One research station. Zhang, the station's big boss, introduces him to his daughter, Su Yin, the brainy biologist there. And I'm telling you dude, the view is breathtaking, an ocean full of creatures that would blow your mind. Turns out our man Morris is the patron of the whole shebang. They're planning an excursion to the Mariana Trench, suspecting it's even deeper than we thought. Led by Captain Laurie, they reach the bottom of the ocean and, voila, they break through the clouds and go even deeper. And there you have it, the real bottom of the sea, full of creatures weirder than a green dog. How wonderful, isn't it? Zhang starts spouting off about how the temperature in that area is higher than in the water above, and that this makes it possible for there to be life out there. But it turns out that something that appears to be bigger than King Kong himself appears on the radar and comes at them like a freight train. The monster hits the sub, sending them flying. The cameras go down, and they lose the signal. There they are, discussing what to do, and it occurs to Mac that they should call his colleague Jonas. No one has ever managed to make a rescue at that depth and come out to tell the tale. But Dr. Heller is not at all happy with the idea. According to him, Jonas let his men down on the last mission. But Mac defends him, arguing that if he hadn't, they all would have died. Suddenly we find ourselves in Thailand, where Jonas has been drowning his sorrows in alcohol since that last mission. Mac tries to convince his friend to help them rescue the others, but Jonas isn't having it, not wanting the responsibility of more lives on his conscience. But guess what happens? Jonas learns that his ex Laurie is on the submarine, and suddenly changes his mind, deciding to embark on one last mission. Meanwhile, the poor guys trapped on the sub manage to turn on the lights and reactivate the power system. But the beast lunges forward again, injuring its captain and smashing his oxygen tank. Su Yin, seeing from afar that they are running out of time, decides to rush to the rescue. She promises her daughter that she will return and after a soul-crushing hug, climbs aboard the submarine and dives into the dark ocean to rescue her colleagues. And there she goes, our Suyin, entering the water and breaking through the barrier. She locates the trapped team, tries to snag the broken submarine, but suddenly something attacks her from behind and jerks her around like a toy. Oh boy, this is hot! Suyin manages to wriggle out of the predicament, but giant squid legs surround her in the blink of an eye. The critter gives her ship a squeeze, it's clear it's not going to let her escape. But what happens? Suddenly, it drops the ship and stains the whole place with its ink. Suyin, in a state of flaccidity, realizes that another fiercer animal has finished off the squid. Our brave girl is dumbfounded when she recognizes the shark, a megalodon, a prehistoric critter that was thought to be extinct. But in the blink of an eye, the shark turns around and lunges at her, eager to send her ship on a cruise. Just when it seems all is lost, the megalodon changes course toward a shower of flares that captures its attention. It turns out that Jonas has come to the rescue and is trying to divert the beast away from the others, giving Su Yin a chance to slip away. Taking advantage of the fact that the shark is entertaining the flares, Jonas manages to dock with the stranded submarine and begins to pull everyone to safety. But before they can get away, the monster turns around and comes after them again. Seeing that they have no time, one of the last ones on the sub pushes the others out and closes the hatch. The rescue ship shoots out, and the poor man stands there, turning on all the lights to lure the monster towards him. Upon colliding with the submarine, the bug causes a brutal explosion. The colleague sacrifices himself to save the others. When they finally return to the surface, everyone mourns the loss of their friend. Jonas feels the worst, thinking it's his fault he couldn't save his buddy, even though it's clearly not the case. To top it off, after a hot shower that is more for the delight of the girls in the audience, Jonas opens the door to find Su Yin, who enters his room as a little Christmas present. He tries to thank the man for saving his life, but is speechless at the sight of the testosterone show before him. Su Yin tries to get out of there as quickly as possible out of embarrassment, but not before taking one last look behind the door. Please, if you're enjoying the video, show it with your precious like. For you, it's just a second and you help me a lot. Later, they gather to discuss what to do with the Megalodon, but Morris is only interested in making money from the beast. What a mess. Oh yeah, let's spice up this story. So there she was, Su Yin's little offspring, exploring the basement like it was her playground, unaware of the monster lurking in the darkness. 
Suddenly, a shark the size of a bus lunged at the glass with all its might, causing the place to shake as if an earthquake was happening. And of course, everyone down there, witnessing that bite on the glass bigger than a car. And if there was any doubt about what just happened, our little shark friend decided to put on a show by splitting a whale in half like cutting a piece of butter. In the blink of an eye, they realize that their fishy pool has been invaded by an adventure-seeking megalodon with a hunger for anything in its path. While they try to find a solution to their huge problem, their computer alarms go off, announcing shipwrecks left and right, a clear sign that our shark buddy is having a feast. Without hesitation, they dive into the sea, only to find the remnants of the ships that the megalodon had decided to use as appetizers. They understand that they need to do something, and fast, before the megalodon becomes an even bigger problem. Then, in a burst of bravery or madness, Jonas decides he will personally attach a tracker to the shark. He jumps into the water, and even though logic tells him he's making a huge mistake, the megalodon seems more interested in other things and allows him to place the tracker. But as always, someone had to mess up and make things even more complicated. They try to retrieve Jonas, and somehow end up annoying the shark, which suddenly decides that Jonas might make a tasty snack. But thanks to the speed of the boat, they manage to save Jonas at the last second, although the megalodon is still lurking. With the tracker in place, they decide it's time to put their plan to catch the shark into action. They put Suyin in a shark cage and submerge her into the ocean, hoping they can sedate the megalodon and put an end to its reign of terror. And that's as far as we've gotten, folks. And just like that, the shark started circling poor Suyin like flies to a piece of cake. But as quickly as they came, they vanished upon sensing the presence of something much larger. Out of nowhere, the megalodon lunged at the cage, sending it flying through the air as if it were a mere toy. The beast showed no mercy, dragging the cage and the boat with incredible force. Amidst the struggle, the brave Su Yin manages to inject the tranquilizer into the shark, but it doesn't even flinch and continues trying to swallow the cage. When Jonas sees that his companion is in real danger, he dives into the water like a superhero from a movie, climbing up the cable to reach Su Yin. The megalodon gets a bit excited with all the commotion and manages to toss one of the crew members into the water, getting distracted enough for Jonas to save Su Yin. But the megalodon doesn't give up easily and goes after the snack that just fell into the water. In the midst of all this, Jonas is trying to free Su Yin, who runs out of oxygen and loses consciousness. With one final effort, Jonas manages to pull Su Yin out of the cage before it sinks to the ocean floor. On the boat, the rest of the crew had set up a trap for the shark using bait and cables. And although the megalodon seemed more interested in devouring Jonas, the cables managed to stop it just in time. And as if it were a miracle, the tranquilizer finally takes effect, leaving the monster dazed and giving everyone a chance to escape. Back on the boat, they try to revive Su Yin, giving Jonas the perfect excuse to have a more intimate moment with her. When Su Yin finally wakes up, she thanks Jonas for saving her once again, and both realize that this event has brought them together in a special way. Meanwhile, the megalodon, hanging from the boat, becomes the main attraction and the perfect backdrop for a photo. But because there always has to be something more, Jonas decides to play a prank on his colleague by pushing him into the water, which surely left him with a refreshing sensation, so to speak. And just when everything seemed to be going smoothly, the big brother of Meg arrived out of nowhere, leaping like a steroid-infused dolphin, engulfing its younger sibling in the blink of an eye. Not satisfied with that, the monster capsized the boat, sending everyone on board into the water. Jonas, the relentless hero, manages to rescue Suin's father and bring him to the floating debris of the boat. But the man didn't look good, not at all. Fortunately, the lifeboats had survived, and they managed to climb aboard them to escape the nightmarish scene. But Meg had no intention of letting them get away so easily, chasing them with astonishing speed. In the midst of panic, Morris manages to call his trusted men to help them. The reinforcements arrive just in time and manage to place a tracker on the beast before giving it a good scare with a few electric shocks. Finally, it seemed they were safe. But the joy didn't last long as Su Yin's father succumbed to his injuries and died in her arms. Morris, showing his more humane side, decides to shut down the research facility until Meg is eliminated. He even contacts the government to take care of the problem, but of course, this was nothing but a lie. In reality, Morris had his own plan and flew straight towards the shark with his equipment to finish it off. They dropped bombs into the water, causing gigantic explosions, and finally, something big floated up to the surface. It seemed they had succeeded, that they had killed Meg. But as they approached, they realized that what was floating was nothing more than a giant whale and that they were surrounded by hungry sharks. Panic ensued. They tried to get away as fast as possible, but Morris fell into the water and became the Meg's meal of the day. After this feast, the monster disappeared once again into the depths of the sea. The next day, they realized that Morris never informed anyone about the presence of Meg, leaving them in the same initial position. They had to find and kill the beast before it caused more damage. Hold on tight, because this is about to get intense. Here we go, the fearless hunters of big fish, sailing through the vast sea, determined to catch the megalodon. But beware, 
The beast isn't just taking a leisurely stroll, it's heading straight towards a beach packed with unsuspecting swimmers as innocent as chicks in a coop. Our heroes try to alert the authorities, but no one pays attention to them. So, it's time to roll up their sleeves and come up with a plan. Their idea is to use whale sounds to divert the shark and just in case, load the boat with weaponry. Meanwhile, at the beach, the folks are enjoying the sun and the sea, oblivious to the impending danger. And suddenly, bam! There comes the massive creature devouring everything in its path. Panic ensues, and people start running like crazy, but the megalodon keeps doing its thing, eating and advancing relentlessly. However, upon hearing the whale sounds, the shark changes course. Elsewhere, Jonas and Su Yin are on their boats, awaiting the arrival of the shark. But when it appears, the beast attacks with unstoppable fury. Jonas manages to evade the monster's jaws and lures the shark away from the boat, leading it towards Su Yin, who is armed and ready to shoot. But oh no! Her shot misses and causes a massive explosion. Helicopters come flying by, but upon seeing the size of the shark beneath the water, the pilots are left speechless, lose their concentration, and end up colliding with each other and the boat. The crew has to jump into the water to escape the explosion and now find themselves at the mercy of the megalodon. Suyin manages to grab the shark's attention and lures it towards Jonas, giving him a chance to shoot. But then, at the worst possible moment, the weapon system malfunctions, leaving him in a very tight spot. In another twist of the plot, Suyin is forced to go to the rescue of the people in the water, including her daughter, leaving Jonas alone in his face-off with the megalodon. Go for it, Suyin! She manages to reunite with her daughter and rescue the rest of the distressed swimmers. Meanwhile, Jonas, with options dwindling, decides to go all in on one last desperate attempt. He speeds towards the megalodon and goes underneath the monster, slicing its belly with his boat and turning the water red with the shark's blood. But of course, the meg doesn't just sit idly by. It attacks Jonas's boat, puncturing the capsule and causing it to flood. Jonas, in a display of bravery or madness, I'm not quite sure, jumps off the boat while the shark focuses on biting metal. Taking advantage of the distracted beast, Jonas approaches and thrusts his weapon into its eye. Take that! The creature leaps out of the water like a deranged dolphin, allowing Jonas to deliver the final blow before they both plunge back into the water. Within seconds, a group of sharks, attracted by the blood, start tearing the megalodon apart. Luckily, Su Yin manages to grab Jonas before he becomes shark bait as well and pulls him away from the shark feeding frenzy. After being rescued, our heroes celebrate their victory over the monster, congratulate themselves for avenging their fallen comrades, and set sail towards a promising future. But the adventure doesn't end here. I wait for you in the next one. Let's go!